if you hang out in the FOSS world long enough, you will hear the term reproducible build. And just going by the name, it sounds pretty neat, I guess. But I can't be the only one who hears this term relatively often and just never looked into what it's all about and why it really matters. And recently, I came across this blog post from Morton Linderud, NixOS is not reproducible. And this got me thinking, maybe I should dig into what a reproducible build actually is, so that maybe other people can find out as well, and when I did so, I thought it's a pretty neat concept. So, what is a reproducible build? Well, this is defined by reproducible builds. A build is reproducible if given the same source code, build environment, and build instructions, any party can recreate bit by bit identical copies of all specified artifacts. This being things like binaries, documentation, so on and so forth. The relevant attributes of the build environment, the build instructions, and the source code, as well as the expected reproducible artifacts, are defined by the authors or distributors. The artifacts of a build are the part of the build results that are the desired primary output. Basically, if I have source code, and I compile the source code, I will get a binary. Now if you have the source code, and you compile it, you will also get a binary. But those binaries may not necessarily be the exact same binary, they might have some slightly different data. In the case of a reproducible build, that is not what happens. If you build the application in the exact same way, you get the exact same result. Now in Morton's post, he distinguishes this from two other concepts, hermetic builds and verifiable builds. Hermetic builds means that we are building in isolated environments, with all the sources specified up front and some cryptographic pinning to ensure this is true. I believe most Linux distributions and Linux package managers accomplish this to some degree and it is somewhat of a solved problem. It doesn't matter if we're talking Arch Linux, Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, when a distro is building a package, it's not just random maintainers that are building their package with just whatever dependencies they have on their system. That distro has a defined environment for how packages need to be generated. This ensures that all of the packages are generated in a consistent manner. The results are not necessarily identical, but if they build the package twice, they are going to get a similar result. Verifiable builds implies there is a trusted and validated path from the binary to the source. This doesn't mean the build is reproducible, but it means that we should know what the build contains to a high degree of certainty. This is what I believe a lot of the recent years of supply chain security focus has given us with build providence, attestation, and a myriad of SBOM standards, that being software bill of materials. So if you are building a package in this way, you know Okay, this is who is involved in the project. This is the work that they have done. This is exactly where this code lies in the code base. Okay, this is how the code got to me. I know the developers have not injected code in the thing that they've given me because I have verified that it is identical to what is in the source repo. Basically, everything in the build chain is clearly laid out, but the result may not be reproducible. Now, you might rightfully think, wait, Aren't builds already reproducible? If I have the source code of my system, and then I compile the source code, I will get a binary. If I do the exact same thing again, won't that be a bit-by-bit -bit replication of the original application? No, not necessarily. Here is a high-level example. Let's say when you compile the application, it takes in a build timestamp. The first one is compiled at 1pm, and the second at 2pm. These might be functionally identical applications, but they are not bit by bit identical. Let's say there are multiple correct orders for compiling the source files. Depending on the order you get, you are going to get a different binary result. And let's say you have a high level function, and when it is compiled down into binary, there are multiple correct ways for that function to be compiled. Even basic things like being in a different time zone, having a different language set, all of these can cause slightly different binary results in certain conditions. This problem gets considerably more complicated when you start looking into things like compiler bugs, where functionally, you are going to get the same result. 
but due to some weird magic happening in GCC, it produces a slightly different binary. That is not just theoretical, that's a line taken from Morton's blog post. I spent two to three months tracking down a GCC bug in FLTO, and I assure you, I thought it was fun at least for an hour or two. Two months later though, uh, I don't think he was having fun anymore. Now you might be thinking, why does it matter? Isn't the system we're using now completely fine? Well, one of the great things about free and open source software is that you may inspect the source code for malicious flaws, but most software is distributed pre-compiled with no method to confirm whether they correspond. Maybe if you're a Gen 2 user, you go and compile everything yourself. That's great for you, or if you're an LFS user. And if you're, say, a KDE or GNOME developer, you probably compile a lot of the KDE or GNOME stack on your system. But what about the rest of the applications? You have no idea if the binary that you have on your system is actually representative of the source code repo. You don't have any way to compare that, because if you try to compile the application on your system, it's going to look different than the binary you get from your distro. Not because they are making any changes to it, but because the environment they are building it in is completely different to yours. You are able to verify the source code being downloaded by the distro developers is the source code from the repo. You are able to verify that when you download a package, it is the package being distributed by your distro, thanks to a cryptographic signature. But if you look at the binary in that package, you are not able to verify that the binary that you are given is a binary generated from that source code or if something was injected along the way. You have no way of generating a binary with the exact same build environment that matches that binary result. This incentivizes attacks on developers who release software not only via traditional exploitation, but also in the forms of political influence, blackmail, or even threats of violence. This is particularly a concern for developers collaborating on privacy or security software. Attacking these typically result in compromising particularly politically sensitive targets, such as dissidents, journalists, and whistleblowers, as well as anyone wishing to communicate securely under a repressive regime. Whilst individual developers are a natural target, it additionally encourages attacks on build infrastructure as a successful attack would provide access to a large number of downstream computer systems. Cough, cough, XZ. By modifying the generated binaries here instead of modifying the upstream source code, illicit changes are essentially invisible to its original authors and users alike. The motivation behind the reproducible builds project is therefore to allow verification that no vulnerabilities or backdoors have been introduced during this compilation process by promising identical results are always generated from a given source. This allows multiple third parties to come to a consensus on a correct result, highlighting any deviations as suspect and worthy of scrutiny. But how do we do this? First, the build system has to be made entirely deterministic. Transforming a given source must always create the same result. For example, the current date and time must not be recorded and the output always has to be written in the same order. Second, the set of tools used to perform the build and more generally the build environment should either be recorded or predefined. Basically a list of everything that needs to be set up to have an identical build environment. Third, users should be given a way to recreate a close enough build environment, perform the build process and validate that the output matches the original build. Close enough because maybe there are certain parts of the build environment that are not actually relevant. If, for whatever reason, the application doesn't need to know your system language, for example, that might not have any effect on the outputted binary. Now, unlike some of these development protocols about securing the open source supply chain, this isn't something that is coming from on high. This is something coming directly from the FOSS community itself. Who is involved? Let's go to projects, and you'll see some pretty big names that you probably recognize. Alpine, Arch Linux, uh, Debian, Coreboot, Fdroid, FreeBSD, Fedora, GNU Geeks, and a bunch of others. Now, different projects are at different levels of reproducibility. Distros like Debian and Arch Linux are doing incredibly well. Across all of the Arch repos, 
Arch is 80.5% reproducible. Debian, it very much depends on what the architecture is. On AMD64, which is x86 64-bit, it is 96.1% reproducible. But if you go down a bit to the experimental 32-bit stuff, you're at 63.9% reproducible, or ARMHF, 58.3. Some projects like TrySquill are not in the greatest of states. Right now it says 35%, but they are making progress. And others like Alpine and Fedora, this says Fedora 23, may have been doing stuff in the past, but right now, you know, aren't making a ton of progress there. Now, in the Fedora case, as of last year, there was some discussion about restarting up the reproducible initiative I don't really know if this has gone anywhere. There is currently um, seven comments on this, but maybe it's going to happen. Basically, this was all a long way to say reproducible builds are a work in progress. There are things that are reproducible, but a full distro at the scale of something like Arch Linux is not there yet. It might get there at some point, and there is a lot of effort to make it happen. But, going back to Morton's post, there is so much work to do. Come join the reproducible builds effort in your Linux distro. There is constant work in all major Linux distros that needs help. It's a great way to do cross-distro collaborative work, and you can learn the eldritch horror that is build systems. Arch Linux is aiming to get 90% reproducibility again. NixOS, whilst not being fully reproducible, does have a dashboard listing out the issues that they are working on, and if you're interested in the NixOS project, this is a great place to go to. So if any of that happens to pique your interest, I'll leave all of the relevant links in the description down below. Be sure to go and check it out if it's something that you might want to go work on. Personally, I think it's a really cool idea, and I would like the ability to perfectly replicate the binaries and properly be able to verify what is actually being installed. But let me know your thoughts in the description, description, comments, in the comments down below. So, if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrubs, and Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Reproduce this.